Wellness Warriors, I want to talk about someone that I truly care about who made a huge change in her diet that resulted in huge improvements in her health. The reason I want to talk about her is because changing the food is something that most of us could do, but we don't for multiple different reasons. A lot of it because we're afraid, a lot of it because we don't know what to change. And I want to walk you through her story because I think it's going to inspire someone to do something a little different and change your health and be stronger going forward. For her, it seemed like the medical issues or the discomfort, I should call it, started in puberty, where when she began her menstrual cycle, she had huge migraines and menstrual cramps. She also remembers that around this time was the first time she was told by her doctor that she's anemic. So because of that, her parents decided to beef up, <laughs> pun intended, the red meats in her diet. So and also the green vegetables, you know, broccoli, leafy greens to try to get more iron into her. Despite eating red meats weekly, when her labs were done two years later, she still was showing iron deficiency. She recalls that when she was around 21, school and work was taking up a lot of her time. And so she was often not home for supper. So she would have to eat burgers or pasta to try to keep up pasta with meat sauce to try to keep up her uh, iron content so that it didn't dip too low. When she went to the doctor during that period of time and again got her blood work taken, uh, her blood iron was so low that they put her on iron pills. Unfortunately for her, taking the iron pills had some serious side effects. She reported having um, numbness uh, on her thighs and she reported having um, like a bad taste like in her mouth, like it didn't taste right. And she was also very, very fatigued. So she actually decided to discontinue taking the medication without doctor approval because the doctors actually told her that it was impossible for the medication to be causing these side effects. Although when she stopped taking the medication, these symptoms went away. When she was around 23, she noticed that her knees were starting to have pain. So if she ran or walked upstairs, it was quite painful. And by the time she was 28, her back and shoulders were also in pain. So happily, she started her family when she was 32. Unhappily, she found out when she was 32 that she had a rare blood condition, which explained the iron deficiency that she had lived her entire life. That was a double-edged sword because it did at least give her something to look at. Unfortunately, according to the doctors, there was nothing to be done. She just had to be careful not to eat foods that were too high in iron. By the age of 36, now we're adding neck pain to the problem. And she was really certain that there must be arthritis or some kind of degenerative something happening. And this fear spurred her towards doing some um, chiropractic appointments and trying to keep herself as limber as possible so trying to move a bit more and just be a bit more active she had a child so she would play with her child and take the child outside and just try to do more activities to keep herself moving the weekly chiropractic appointments eventually became monthly because she was doing better and she was feeling good however she did notice around this time that her weight had started to rise so and enter new problem. Not being particularly fond of dieting, she decided that she'd conquer the weight thing by just moving more, eating a healthier diet. So a healthier diet for her meant she was gonna eat more at home rather than eating out, ordering food. Despite these efforts, the weight did continue to rise. And the next major problem that she faced was that around the age of 45, she now had hip pain. So no explanation, no fall or, or injury, just woke up limping. She decided to book a chiropractic appointment right away, went, didn't feel much relief. Before the following week's next appointment that she had, she was in excruciating pain, like barely able to walk. And she wasn't really able to do any of her normal activities like in her day. At this point, she was faced with a decision to make because she went to see her doctor and explained what was happening. And the doctor basically told her that from what they could see, 
there wasn't anything that they could do right now for her hip because it wasn't bad enough for a hip replacement, but they could see she was in pain. So they offered her medication to, you know, dull the pain. And they said, eventually, if, if, when the hip got worse, then she'd be a candidate for hip replacement at some point in time. You can imagine that that was devastating information because you weren't being told take this medication and it's going to get better. She was being told take this medication and wait for it to get worse so that we can do a hip replacement. The other issue that she was having is that the last time she took medication, those iron pills, she had all kinds of side effects and the doctors didn't believe her that the pills were causing those side effects. She was really worried about the stated side effects that were possible from these medications. And to make it worse, one of the main side effects that the doctor told her was very likely to happen was more weight gain. She left the doctor's office and now is looking at what options do I really have? Am I really taking this medication? And she decided whether it was a good idea or not, she decided she wasn't going to take the medication. She was so sure that it was just this damn extra weight that she was carrying. And if she could just lose 20, 30 pounds, that her hip would start to feel better. So she went full force on what she was already doing. Zero eating out, zero junk food, only cooking healthy meals, lean meat, vegetables, sides of rice or pasta or potatoes only, um, healthy salads, just really low fat dressings, like, you know, a diet, um, what do you call it? Low fat yogurt. Like she actually started to eat fruits and because she didn't like fruit, but everybody says how healthy fruit is for you. And she thought eating fruit would help her to have a snack that wasn't cookies or, or any other tempting something that might make her overeat her calories for the next six months. Despite the pain that she was in, she had to move more. So she took up going for extremely long walks hour or more each day on top of her spectacular diet <laughs> that she was doing. And after six months of doing all the right things, her weight was exactly the same. Now she was devastated after all this time and not losing anything, but she came away with one very interesting piece of information. Somehow when she went on these long walks, the longer she walked, the better her hip felt. And then when she got back home, she would have like an hour, like maybe 90 minutes of ability to keep walking normally and to be able to sit for an extended period of time and be comfortable. But then about 90 minutes later, when she was back home, the pain would come back. This made her question if this was strictly a weight thing, since in her mind, I'm walking where my weight is on the hip, but I'm feeling better. So she did some research. She learned that likely what was happening with her hip was inflammation. And she learned that inflammation can be caused by eating sugar. And she was really confused, like how could she possibly have inflammation? since she's only eating healthy foods. So she did some more research. What she learned was that fruit, pasta, rice, vegetables are all carbohydrate slash sugar. What was funny is she kind of knew that, but hadn't put it together that that sugar and the sugar in a cookie would have had the same impact. So this devastating health, unhealthy body she was walking around in that they could have been connected in that way. And now she was trying to figure out, so if the solution is to minimize the sugar that I'm eating, well, then how am I supposed to do that? And so she did some more research and what she was advised is that actually she would need to stop eating fruit. She would need to stop eating rice and pasta and most of the vegetables like potatoes, carrots, corn that she liked to eat were actually causing her to have too much sugar in her diet. And what she was being advised to do was eat meat and the fat that comes along with it. So like the, 
the, the fat around the pork chop, the fat around the, that's on the chicken. She was being advised to eat the whole egg, bacon, basically to eat foods that doctors frown upon. She was being advised to fry her meats and vegetables in lard, things that doctors frown upon. They wanted her to use heavy cream instead of milk. It all seemed to be so counterintuitive. So why did this woman decide to eat the diet that is the exact opposite of everything that doctors have told us to do? It was actually because when she complained to her doctors that the iron pills were causing her to have numbness and a strange taste and to be tired, and they dismissed her and said it's impossible, but then she stopped taking the pills and all of those symptoms went away, she lost a bit of faith in her doctors. And then when she did her research and found out that we have known what insulin does in the body since 1921, which is react to high amounts of sugar and then take that sugar and store it away as fat, but also that high amounts of sugar cause inflammation in the body. Like this is known information. She felt much more confident in her decision to follow the diet that didn't seem to make sense. So what she actually did was eat a very, very, very low carb diet. It would have been considered keto because she was aiming at 20 grams of carbs or less. She wasn't successful, but she was aiming at it. She ate low glycemic vegetables. She ate um, cabbage and kale and cauliflower and greens and lots of salads. She ate meat and the accompanying fat. She also ate nuts and keto style breads and snacks. Now these meals were available to her family, but for the most part, she ate differently than everybody else in the household. And that was difficult in the beginning, but after about two weeks, something really weird happened, but it caught her attention because she was in the kitchen and she was cleaning up and you know, she moved stuff around. And just as she was about to leave the kitchen, she realized that she had moved some chocolate bars to a different part of the counter. And at no point had she had the idea that I want to, I want to eat them. She just moved them and was leaving the kitchen. She couldn't remember the last time in her history that she was able to move chocolate bars around and not want, not even not want, not even eat one. But she did that. And that was her first indication that her cravings for junk had actually fallen away. Her commitment to eating healthy was solidified. And after about three months, her hip pain gone, but also her knee pain, her shoulder pain, her back pain, her neck pain, her shoulder pain. I don't know if I said that already, but all the, the joint pains that she was living gone. Honestly, the story seems anticlimactic. 20 years worth of pain just erased in three months. So we think, hallelujah, she's healed. She gets to go on with her life. But here's the problem. No one else in my family eats this way. Yeah, that's right. This is actually my story. And to many people, it looks like that I might have actually healed my physical problems but opened a whole new can of worms by opening up social problems because we gather around food. How do I gather with the people I care about, my family and my friends? How do I interact when I go for business lunches and, and social events around work? Let's talk about how I actually manage my social life on this restrictive diet that I'm supposedly eating. What's restrictive to other people is normal to me. And it was able to become normal because when I eat keto, my body feels good. I get to play and do things that I want to do. I was able to open up having fun with my daughter again. I was able to go back to doing my sports comfortably again. Eating healthy helps me to enjoy my life. I actually pay attention to how good I feel. And so therefore, when I eat off plan and I feel crappy, I don't like it. And that's a great motivation to keep me happily eating on plan. So 
when I'm going to socialize with others, the things that I pay attention to that allow me to eat what I eat instead of eating what everyone else is eating. So how do I eat what nobody else wants to eat? No one else cares to eat. Everyone thinks it's boring. When I go out, I know in advance what is healthy for me to eat. I will actually ask what are in, what ingredients are in the dishes that are being presented to me? If I see things, obviously I know what vegetables look like. And if I see high carb vegetables, I just won't eat it. And at every family gathering, friend gathering that I've ever been to, there has been some kind of meat, some kind of vegetable. So what I do mm -hmm. is I choose the meat and vegetable combination that suits my lifestyle. I'll have salad if there's a salad. And if I trust the salad dressing, I will have salad dressing. I make the plate suit my needs. I want to point something out. I'm luckily not in a family where anybody's vegetarian or vegan or anything like that. However, if I go to a family event or gathering that let's say they're having pizza, like from the corner store, which I wouldn't eat, then my option is A, eat before I leave my home or B, eat when I get back home. If I'm ha hungry at that point in time, I will choose not to eat what's being served. I do have a third option, which is bring something that I would like to eat with me. I know that a lot of people become annoyed or embarrassed when people ask them why they're not eating X, Y, or Z. And they're going to say, because I'm dieting. And then they feel bad to say they're dieting because they're embarrassed that they're overweight. Or they're going to say, I don't eat that because I'm keto. And then they're embarrassed that they can't eat that because they're keto, because they're keto, because they were overweight. And I want to point out that we keep putting our weight as the reason that we're eating healthy, rather than the fact that eating healthy is healthy. What I tend to do is that I will say, I don't want to eat that because either A, I don't like it, which is true. My tastes have changed and I don't like carby food anymore. B, I'm allergic, which is true. I can't have tomatoes or any nightshades. And when I eat sugar, I feel sick. Theoretically, that's the definition of being allergic. So I'm not saying anything that's not true. And finally, I will say, you don't have to say anything. You can say, I don't want it because I don't want it. And I'm allowed not to want it. And that can be end of the conversation. We don't have to explain ourselves of why we are eating the way that we're eating. You are allowed to just eat what you like and not eat what you don't like, especially if you're an adult. If you're a kid, now we have to have conversations with parents and that's a whole other conversation. But right now I'm talking to all us adults who are shy to be at a family event, to be at a situation and decline to eat Aunt Susie's cookies because she's going to be insulted. I'm not trying her cookies. The other reason that I'm okay with letting Aunt Susie be insulted that I'm not trying her cookies is because later on when I go home and either tonight or tomorrow, I'm not feeling well. I'm in pain. I'm struggling. Maybe my joints are hurting me again. You're not there with me when I'm struggling. You're not feeling the pain that I'm feeling when I'm struggling. So why am I so worried that you're a little insulted that I didn't eat your, your cookies? Right? Who cares? Wellness warrior, your pain matters more than someone being a little insulted that you didn't eat their silly cookie or mashed potato, whatever. Doesn't matter. I would rather leave people upset because I didn't eat their garbage food than to live in pain later. I'm encouraging you to do the same. My best advice for eating out at restaurants is to check the menu before you go. Most of the time you can call the restaurant and find out if they're willing to make accommodations, if there's a fee for making those accommodations, etc. And you can also question, ask questions about what kind of oils they use, what kind of uh, seasonings, if they put sugar in the dish that you're thinking about, you can ask those questions. The worst case scenario, if you encounter a restaurant that doesn't make accommodations, arrive at dessert. And when you arrive at dessert, order a coffee, and enjoy the time with the friends for the last part of the evening. But you didn't have to sit through a meal that you didn't want to eat or and pay for a meal that you didn't want to eat or sit 
at a table not eating if that would make you uncomfortable. It would not make me uncomfortable. If I wanted to see this group of friends, I would go at the normal time. I would order some coffee and that's what I would have while they're eating. And I would just explain that I'm not eating. My friends understand that I put my health first. My friends live with me through my painful years and understand that feeling good trumps everything else. Luckily for me, my friends also are open to choosing a restaurant where I can have something to eat. Everybody's mileage will vary. But have I gone to a restaurant and had just a coffee while everybody else was eating? Yes, I have. Was I uncomfortable? No, I wasn't. Because when I left, I left feeling good and felt good the next day and the day after that and the day after that. When it comes to junk food that I used to eat, my best advice for you is give your body time. As I mentioned, I started off doing keto treats and keto replacement breads and keto. And first of all, can I just say, none of them tasted as good as my memory of how the other thing used to taste. But second of all, that transition, for me at least, didn't last very long because the stuff doesn't actually taste as good as people make out that it tastes. I've made lots of things that taste eh, passable. I've purchased things like keto packaged products that taste eh, passable, but is it amazing? No. And the cool thing about how our body works, the more I feed my body healthy, delicious foods because I cook it well, the more my body learns to like the healthy, delicious foods that I'm giving it right now. And the less it pulls me towards the garbage that was pulling me through addiction that I don't actually need to have. So my taste buds have changed and I'm no longer chasing garbage foods. I'm no longer chasing junk foods. And can I point out that junk food, as we call it so lovingly, is exactly what it is, junk. You eat junk food and your body is made from that junk food. You don't feel good. And then we're all confused why we don't feel good. Wellness warrior, let's stop being confused by this point. We don't feel good because we're eating garbage. Junk food is going to produce in us junk, junk proteins that ruin our health. The fact that sugar was causing pain and inflammation in my body that I was unaware of, by the way, but ruining my health, ruining my fun, eventually stopped me from even being able to work properly. That was a huge motivation for me to just throw the junk food out of my life. Just get rid of it. Unnecessary. Another thing I want you to think about is that your friends and family who you're so worried about socializing with because they're eating normal food and you're not, they're eating based on taste. And they're, they're eating based on taste whether it's healthy for their body or not. I played that game, right? I lived the repercussions of eating based on taste food that wasn't healthy for my body and I was absolutely living insulin resistance. I was having weight gain. I was on a path to a hip replacement. I was ever increasing in my weight. Like it, I was not healthy. Wellness warrior. Food is the building block of the body. And we have the option to keep eating what doctors are telling us are healthy, but is causing our weight to rise and our body to break down and our body not to be able to manage and our, or we could eat the diet that, although seeming counterintuitive, leads most people who eat it feeling better, healthier, and enjoying their body, their healthy, strong body again. You need to eat the biologically appropriate foods that helps your body to build itself and fuel itself cleanly. I was able to heal my body because I began to feed it what it needed to repair itself from the inside so I could be healthy and look good on the outside. Internal health is always more important than looking thin and, you know, looking fancy. But if your insides are not healthy, you will suffer. That's the whole reason that our body neutralizes sugar immediately and stores it away as fat. It doesn't care if we don't like the look of the fat. The fat is keeping us healthy. If you're struggling to stay on track and eat healthy all the time, a community is a great way to keep you on track because you feel supported and you can talk through any problems that you're having.
I'm really excited to announce that I'm creating a community so that we can do this together, so that we can achieve our goals, so that we can, as a community, help educate each other on the best ways to tackle these problems and eat healthy all the time. Build that healthy body that you really want. To kick things off, I'm going to be launching a really fun challenge, hopefully before Christmas. But before that, I need your help. I'm not certain what to call our community. Can you please put it in the comments below? What do you think the name of our community should be? I'm really looking forward to your suggestions because this is about us. Can we be strong together? Can we change our health and hopefully the help, health of our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren? Let's pull everybody out of this situation where we're eating garbage all the time. Healthy food. What is our community going to be called? I'm really looking forward to hearing your ideas. Thank you so much, Wellness Warriors. We're going to do this together.